Yo, what's good, people? My name is Cubala. You're chilling here with us at Kipwa. Some of you might be wondering what Kipwa means. It means knowledge is power when applied. The reason that we chose this name is because we want to find people out there in our community that are interested with hopes that you'll take the knowledge that they give us, turn it into power, and apply it to your own life. This is huge in this day and age and era as the entrepreneur grows. You've got to get down to your roots and just do your own thing. Don't let anyone stop you. We got mad love for the homies in the house today. Latirix, Lyrics Born, and Latif the Truth Speaker from the Bay Area, Oakland style rap from the 90s. This is huge, man. I'm telling you, these guys got mad knowledge. Make sure you cop their second album, the second album, anywhere online. Check it. Stay up with us. My name is Cubaba. This is Kipwa. We're out. Kipwa, featuring Cubala and Hyphy Tech. Knowledge is power when applied. God, backstage graffiti is so crude. It always comes down to genitalia. It's real. Look at that shit. Somebody made a uh 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 in the fucking <laughs> ceiling. Ah, they totally did. What is that? <laughs> What is the blue oh part? Oh my gosh. How you guys doing? How you got, how, everybody? Uh, my name is Cubala. We're chilling here with Latirix. This is pretty freaking awesome. Amazing. We'll just get into it. How's the tour going for you guys? So far, the tour has been extraordinary. It's been great. It's been Tour's good. <laughs> Tour's great. Second album. It's out. 16 years in the making. We're finally out here doing this. Yeah. Tell me about the, the second album. This is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. There's a big gap in between the first album and the second album. Is that just kind of the genius in work, or is it just kind of how it played out? Yeah, it just, it just kind of came together that way as far as just timing. We both had been off doing our own thing for a long time, and we always talked about getting back together and doing another T-Rex album, but it just, just would, had never really lined up with the stars. So then it did, and we just we made it happen, and we've just been rolling with it. Yeah. So, second album's out. Where can people download it? Where can people buy it? Where can we get it in the mail? Uh, you could get it on our website, LatirixAuthentic.com. You can buy the CD at any CD store, record store that there is. The vinyl's also available. It's also available at all the digital retailers like iTunes, etc. So it's pretty much available wherever you can buy music. You two met in California. Yeah. Neighborhood buddies, best friends. So we, we, um, we got together in college, the five of us, meaning Latif, Lyrics Born, TJ Shadow, Chief XL, Gifty Gab, also known as Black Alicious. And at that time, the, the, we were the five artists and the principals, but Jeff Chang was also there, and, and Joe Patel, who also known as Jazz Bo, was there. And so the seven of us, we just started this label because... We had all this music, but nobody would sign us. Yeah. So we figured, well, well, we should just put out our own record. How important is that, uh, as, just, as an artist, uh, how important is that to, to you, just uh, to both of you and to your career, that you guys are able to just hang on to that and know that you guys did this together? Well, I think, you know, I think for any independent artist, it's, or for any artist, at some point, whether you're on a major label or not, you're going to have to release something yeah. independently. So I think it's, it's a good... It's a good um, it's a good sort of body of knowledge to have, you know. Do you remember the first time you ever played a show? Boy, first show. See, so we were on the radio. We were on KDVS, so we used to do a lot of stuff there. And then uh, we had Lyrics Born and DJ Shadow put out their single, or the Soul Side single. And then Black Licious put out their single, and then their EP, and that was the first thing that I was on. Um, so I think some of the first shows that I really did on stage were with Black Alicious doing that song. Um, yeah. And then later on, we just continued to tour and we sure. did tons of stuff. Since Has then. everybody always liked your music from the get-go? Or did it, you know, did it take, did you guys grind it out, play a bunch of dead-end shows for long? Or did, I mean, when you guys met, was it just like, well, all the stars aligned and... We we were, we were, we started doing it during hip hop's golden era, and I would say at that time there wasn't really there weren't really bad shows. Right. Pretty much from where we started, we started kind of in at a certain level that was, I think, relatively high in terms of attendance, and even sure. nationally, um, 
and we were kind of on the way on the front end we didn't know it at the time but we were like actually we were on the extreme front end of the independent hip-hop music kind of i don't even call it a trend but movement we were on the very very front end of that so uh i mean i think the when our record came out it was us and wu-tang were like the only independent records that were out and then within four or five years there would just be a wall full of independent right. records right so you guys really i mean you guys really set a statement by doing that and yeah i mean independent artists and, you know just just to give you an idea sure there was one point when we were soul size we had moved down to berkeley at that time and we got a call from raucous records before they were raucous records and they were like hey what's your guys' business plan you know we're looking to do something similar out here in new york you know and we were like business plan that's a good idea we were we just got we, we were making re- music and put it out and it's us but that's a good idea we should get a business plan <laughs> so i mean but right you know and raucous records later went on to blow up and then not you know go away or whatever wherever they're at now but i'm just saying like so we were just at the front end of all that so we never really had like a lull of any kind i guess what do you guys think of how much did the local scene or just the local community just local fan base help you guys really get out and get exposed well i think in the early days it was huge you know because i don't know the, the bay area was kind of going through a music renaissance renaissance at that time you know like all through the 90s you know kind of up until i would say 04 or 05 maybe you know there was just a very strong hip-hop movement in the bay area and interestingly i think it attracted a lot of people to come live in the bay area you know they wanted to be around that they wanted to be around that energy and that creativity and you know i think it was known worldwide that there was something special happening at the bay area at that time so i think that that um you know i think that certainly helped to propel us you know because stone's throw was there at the time we were there quantum was there you know uh e40 had his label too short was still there you know at that time invisible scratch pickles were still going um with cubert and them and uh high row obviously and you know i mean the list goes on and on there were so many groups too so it was a pretty amazing time in that. Crazy. A lot of talent. Yeah. yeah, a lot of talent, a lot of talent, a lot of music all the time. So a lot, a lot of those artists that you just named, you guys friends with, you know, you guys peers, friends, done a lot of collabs, just, you know, met in yeah. brief moments, just, hey man, lots of respect, like what you're doing. Yeah, I think the Bay Area is kind of special in that respect because we never really, you know, if you're creative and you're, and you're you know, and you, you're actually doing something, mm-hmm. Other artists are definitely down to collaborate with each other, you know. What's so your favorite thing about the Bay Area? Um, Should I go to the Bay Area? I've been to California. It's, yeah, right? it's probably that diversity. I think yeah. you know, not just culturally, but just politically, you know, ideologically. There's just a lot of different types of people there, and there's a lot of different kinds of thought, you know, and just it's. It's a uh, it's a pretty special place. You've got you've got the Arise Festival coming up. That's a festival that just kicked off. They just did their first. They just threw their first festival last summer. You're coming out here with Charlie Tuna. Gonna have a good time. Are you excited for that? Yeah. 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 How'd you How did you end up on that? Someone just hit you up and they're like, "We need links for." I want a I want a raffle. It's like an Arise <laughs> raffle. I had a raffle ticket. Can I get five minutes on your set? Actually, it was a rise bingo. <laughs> a rise bingo. My ball shot to the top, as it always does. <laughs> oh, man. No, really looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Well, we're, uh, we're happy. We're excited to see you perform there. There's going to be a lot of people there, I hope. A lot of hippies and tree huggers and s- stinky people. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Is there anything that you guys could shed light on as far as uh, just giving some advice to any local artists, entrepreneurs, people trying to get their name out, get heard, or just loving their craft no matter what it is? How do they stay consistent and keep the reps up because I noticed that is something that you guys have been able to do 
just the solo, the solo tracks, the singles, they're just so powerful. And, and it's not just you guys are just making songs. These songs have messages, and that, that's huge. How do artists stay true to themselves and stay true to just that grind and being able to put that love out for everyone? I was actually talking to a young cat that was there last, at the show last night about this. Uh, I think the important thing is to just always be creating, you know. Um, be putting all of your energy and effort into whatever it is that you have out at the moment, but on your own always be creating and thinking about what your next seed that you're planting is learn from the moment and what it is that you're doing right now and apply it to the to the next go around as long as you stay creating and kind of stay in like a forward moving direction and momentum i feel like at least as an artist it's the healthiest place to be um you know to always kind of be thinking on in terms of what's on the horizon like i said being fully present in the moment and executing and taking advantage of every opportunity that you have in the here and now for what you're working on but always be you know preparing for the future that's what i found because there's always you know hopefully as an artist the idea is that your biggest success is right around the corner so you just have to be open to that experience when it arrives so like I said, taking advantage of everything right now and right here and, and thinking ahead and manifesting. The same way that music in general is creating something unseen and bringing it into a place where other people can experience what was just an idea of yours. Uh, that's the idea that you want to have with your career and what you're doing in your projects. You want to be able to see them in the future and bring them into the present. Powerful. Th those are the kinds of, th that's the kind of message that you can get when you listen to their music. That's, that's how I feel. Anyways, lyrics, lyrics born. How do you feel about being a part of this Jimmy Hands thing? I think it's dope. You know, Jimmy was my dude, you know. He, used to, he was always that kid that was, you know, the Aggie backstage getting on my nerves, you know what I mean? And, but he was always at every show, you know, and I think he was, he was such a fixture here. And um, to me, it's actually kind of touching how, how long you guys have been able to keep it going, you know, just kind of a testament to how, uh, important he was to the community here, so I think it's pretty impressive. Yo, what's good? My name is Q Baba. Welcome back from the interview. You were just chilling with Latirix, Lyrics Born, and Latif, the Truth Speaker. Make sure you purchase their album, the second album. It is crucial for your livelihood. Also, get over to hyphytech.net and catch episodes of Home Invasion and Comedy Around Town with my boy B Ron. Also, please check out my website, cubalamusic.com, to catch shows and upcoming music drops and releases. Check out the homies at kindub.com for hood life gear. That's K-I-N-D-D-U-B.com. My name is Cubala. You're here with Kipwa. Peace.